What we're really trying to achieve is to be able to improve our products in better ways or more effectively. Hey, I'm Nick. I've worked in IT for around 15 years. One of my areas of interest is domain-driven design. I co-authored a book on DDD around 10 years ago with Scott Millitz. And I'm also the author of a recent book called Architecture Modernization, which also has quite a strong DDD influence. To be honest, it's always very difficult to modernize unless you have a real problem. To actually say, we're going to stop building new features and modernize, there needs to be a really strong sense of desire or even fear sometimes. So I think in most situations, it's always great if companies have been thinking about modernization earlier. And very often it does feel a bit late in the journey and you're always thinking, it would have been nice to do this a few years ago for some companies, maybe even five years ago. I think architecture modernization should be a continuous effort. If you're continuously investing in your architecture, taking time to improve things that have become a bit suboptimal, then you're less likely to need big modernization efforts every few years. But I think in saying that, for a lot of companies, the technologies will change, the architecture industry evolves, and so there's always going to be some big changes you'll need to make at some point, but you can definitely minimize that. I think the social aspect of architecture is an important part of modernization, because when we're modernizing, what we're really trying to achieve is to be able to improve our products in better ways or more effectively. And so the architecture is really an enabler of teams to innovate at speed. So it's important to think about how do we design an architecture that's loosely coupled and allows our teams to be autonomous. I think that's one of the most important properties of architecture, not just to have a great architecture on paper, but an architecture that allows teams to do their work quickly and effectively. When modernizing, often teams and companies want to fix lots of things at the same time. And I think whilst it's important to do that, it's important to think about if we're going to invest a lot of effort into improving our software, what other things can we improve at the same time, like the user journey, our domain model? It is the time to think about those, but equally, if you try and do too much at the same time, you might not make any progress. You'll get analysis paralysis and such things. I think one of the most important things companies can do to avoid that is to use techniques like Wardley mapping and to visualize the portfolio and to work out where does modernization make the most sense where are the places where we do have a lot of technical debt, we'd like to improve it, but it's just not viable to do that and just be honest with ourselves and have some sense of priorities. For me, uh, strategic domain driven design is a very important aspect of architecture modernization because we need to be able to think about our business, the different areas of our business, the different areas of ownership, where we create different domain models and how those different domain models talk to each other. So for me, it's not the only tool, but certainly one of the most important. And tools like context mapping are crucial in that aspect. Uh, there's a lot of DDD influence in my book. It's not the only topic, but a lot of the techniques like event storming are very heavily influenced by the DDD community. So quite a big influence, but it's not a pure DDD book.